You know, there's been a lot of talk about this rapture deal. And you heard the whole thing with Harold Camping saying that May 21st, 2011 would be the end times. You also hear about these Mayans, December 21st, 2012, and how that's going to be either the end of the cycle or the end of all things, maybe in Armageddon. But you know what? Jesus spoke about this very thing, and I want to take you to Matthew 24. So it's good reading, and I want to highlight a few verses here. Well, Jesus told us three things. First, that he was going to return. The whole chapter, Matthew 24, as well as Mark 13, if you want a little bit more abbreviated uh, version of it, uh, they, they discuss the details of Jesus' coming, the signs leading up to it, and you see later on in the New Testament, Paul and Peter and John all highlight various aspects of Jesus' return and how we will be caught up to meet him in the air and literally seized up. The rapture is literally what it means. So what we have here, Jesus said, he's going to come back. All right. Second, he said, no man knows the day nor the hour. And this is critical when we think of all these rapture predictions. And uh, even this October 21st remix uh, of what's happening, I'm sure you're going to see this post October 21st and you'll still be here. But the thing is, Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour, Matthew 24, 36. And he also says, neither do the angels in heaven, but only the Father knows the date of the return of Jesus. And interesting too with the Mayans, we have a little bit of his, uh, history, plus and minus here and there with uh, you know, when actually things were exactly taking place. Uh, so it could be plus or minus four years in terms of when the Mayans would have actually had a cycle of their calendar, which essentially just means a new beginning. And the thing is, the Mayans aren't here. And that's one thing also to take note of. But Jesus said, again, no man knows the day nor the hour. So if you hear people say, here is the Christ and there is a Christ, just as Jesus said, don't believe them. There will be false Christs also who will rise up and say that they are Jesus. And Yet we know that everyone will know when Jesus returns. It's going to be an epic event, and not an epic fail. Third, Jesus also said that we need to be ready, and that's the thing that people kind of cynically look at these dates and say, well, oh, this didn't happen then, so I can live life any way I want. And even then, like the, the night before May 21st, I mean, where were you? Were you getting ready for Jesus' return, or you know, were you continuing the life that was preparation? For Jesus' return, or did you go out and just party it up like it was 1999, except, you know, 2011? Um, what we need to do is we always need to be ready, and Jesus says that it's likened unto uh, when he returns, it's going to be like uh, essentially a thief in the night, which Paul and Peter both highlight, 1 Thessalonians 5.2 and 2 Peter 3.10. Both say Jesus will return like a thief in the night when it's unexpected, and Jesus is saying that if a servant is left in charge of his house, and he's doing what the master has wanted, and then Jesus returns. The master returns, then the servant will be blessed. But if the servant's doing all sorts of crazy stuff in this meantime, and then Jesus returns, the master returns, uh, that's not a good scene. So we don't want to be found doing wrong when he returns. We don't want to be caught in sin. We don't want to be doing something totally displeasing to him. Our hearts need to be right with Jesus. And so at all times we need to be ready, and that's often ignored. And again, you can't just brush it off. I mean, this, this one thing happened, we, need, we always need to be ready. So, just uh, as a main message, are you ready? Jesus can return at, any, at, at uh, any time, and there are things that I do believe that will happen before Jesus returns, and we can have confidence in that. But it's no means, uh, by no means any excuse that we, we, ha we can use to uh, sit back on our heels and just do nothing or do the wrong thing. And so, again, another thing, go. Jesus told us to, as you go, make disciples of all nations in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the Great Commission. And so, are you doing that? Are you making disciples? Are you investing in the kingdom? Are you bringing it here to earth? Are you representing Jesus? That's who Christians are. We're Jesus' representatives. How are we representing him? And so, when the non-believer looks, what do, what do they see? They need to see Jesus' glory radiating from us, and both good works as well as just love for Jesus, and um, just, yeah. <laughs> stuff that we need to show. Um, so be ready. What has God called you to do? Are you doing it? Do you need to do it right now? <laughs> Are you, do you need to prepare for it? You know, what, what is, what's the case with you? Uh, just take this and run with it and go and serve the Lord and always be ready for the return of Jesus because, again, he comes as a thief in the night 
and we always need to be ready. So God bless you. Don't be uh, phased by all these false predictions, but again, we don't need to have these false predictions because Jesus has called us to be ready. God bless you.